Hello? Yes? Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Um, so, hello everyone and welcome to the Scientix webinar, Gender Stereotypes in STEM Education and How to Contract Them. My name is Marina Jimenez and I will moderate this session. With us today we have Anker Coven and Pedro Russo, who both are researchers in the field of science communication at Leiden University. For general insight and for the, U the Universe Awareness Project, they wanted to understand the current status of STEM education resources with regard to gender stereotypes. To this end, they led a study focused on gender stereotypes in STEM education resources from Scientex and from the OER Commons repositories. With the findings of this study in mind, uh, they made a list of recommendations for gender balanced education resources for teaching methods and attitudes. During this presentation, both Anne and Pedro will describe the research on whether STEM education resources for primary schools contain gender biased visuals and how their analysis showed that there is a stereotypical representation of men and women in online STEM education resources. Now, before we start the session, I would like to remind all the attendees that in order to receive a certificate, you should please fill, on, fill in your our feedback survey. Uh, we have the link for it that we will provide on the chat uh, on a moment. Only participants who attended the webinar and filled in this survey will be able to receive a certificate. Also, and last, my colleague Noel with the Noel UN account, she will be helping you with any technical problems, so please address her directly on the chat if you're encountering any difficulties. Also, please remember to turn down your cameras and microphone. At the end of the session, we will also have 15 minutes in which you will be able to address any questions that you have to our experts through the chat. But uh, remember that you can also post any question throughout the whole chat, and we will be collecting them. So uh, that's all from my part, and I will leave now the floor for Anne and Pedro, and I hope you'll enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this, in this afternoon. Um, I, I think it's going to be a quite interesting session. For the last years, we have been working in this field. And I'll, I'll give you a bit of a background to who, who we are and why we are here, and also trying to show you why this particular topic is extremely important for all the teachers and educators that work with both boys and girls and students in their classrooms. But before, before we start really looking into the gender stereotypes in the STEM resources, I'd like to give you a, a very short introduction about our background and why we start doing this. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Leiden in the Netherlands. Originally, I'm Portuguese, and I've been working here for the last years. And I've been coordinating this project that is called Universe Awareness. It's an educational project that maybe some of you know, and is really trying to bring the beauty and excitement of astronomy and the universe to classrooms and to children from all around the world. It's an international project. Um, it's a project that really tries to develop educational material, but basically it's a project for teachers, where we're really trying to bring the teachers to be more confident on using science and technology in their classrooms, especially primary school teachers. Yeah. During our project and uh, developing educational material for the project, we, found, we start realizing that uh, there's a lot of educational material that uh, it's gender neutral and this is a good example of the different activities that we do like uh, we have this earth ball is about our our planet earth we have activities about earth moon and sun the planets the constellations and you can find all this information on our uni universe awareness website but when we start looking at other educational materials uh, we realize that there was a bit of a bias in terms of how we were portraying certain <laughs> professions I, I will say the question. How, how we were really looking at the different activities, we could really see that there was a bit of a, a gender bias in the way that we are um, representing some of the jobs and professions in the science and education. And that's why we decided to do this project. And that's why now we are presenting you the, the results of our study and hopefully something that you can use uh, for, for your own activities and for your own thinking of how to really avoid these gender stereotypes. Yeah. So, um, so we, uh, we also looked in the literature and we found that um, when you look at uh, employees in science fields, uh, only 30% is uh, female. 
so um, it's not very balanced and um, there are some um, types of jobs like primary school teacher or pharmacy assistant that are often um, thought of as a job for uh, women and engineers or researchers um, are often thought of to be more for men. Um, so uh, we want to know why, this, uh, why there are so many more men in science fields than women. Um, and it's partly due to unequal hiring. Um, some studies have shown that when people, uh, men and women, were asked to evaluate resumes um, that were exactly the same, the only difference was uh, a man, man's name or a woman's name, uh, they chose, um, or more, more of them chose to hire the man, so Brian in this case, uh, and not Karen. And uh, this might be um, due to prevalent stereotypes that are present, so uh, that science is more something for men or that women are not, uh, they cannot do science very well. Um, and you can also see stereotypes um, in children's toys. Um, when, uh, when they want to attract girls, they use words as beautiful or gorgeous. Um, and for the boys, they have uh, toys that say brilliant or clever. Um, and in school, stereotypes uh, can occur as well. Um, the study um, shown here says that when uh, girls had to do a test on visual and spatial uh, ability, and they were told that boys always do better than the girls score very poorly, but when they are told uh, that there is no difference between boys and girls, um, the girls uh, score better. Um, and when they are told nothing, then they also score poorly. And the um, researchers think that's because uh, the, the stereotype is present in their heads and they think boys do better on this kind of test, so they score, the girls score poorly. Um, and then there's also the general scientist stereotype. Um, when young children are asked to draw scientists, they often draw um, a middle-aged aged, uh, bald man with glasses and a lab coat. Um, so, uh, yeah, most children draw a man and not a woman, and then the, science, uh, the scientist is also very stereotypical in the kind of clothing and looks. Um, so, uh, in the classroom, it's very important for the teacher to teach in a gender-neutral or balanced uh, way, and um, also to use gender-neutral or balanced resources. Um, and gender neutrality means that um, the uh, that there is no difference in how boys or girls are taught. Uh, they should be asked the same kind of questions about the same subjects. And in resources, they should be depicted, um, they can be depicted uh, neutrally. Um, or um, you can teach in a gender balanced way where you, the amount of boys or girls that are, uh, that are named or um, shown in, in resources should be equal. So. Um, there can be a story uh, about a girl, but then there also has to be a story about a boy uh, in science. So we wanted to investigate um, the present status of stereotypes, uh, gender stereotypes, in education, uh, educational material. Um, and we wanted to look at the visuals, so the images and videos, but also the texts, because uh, text can also be uh, gender biased. Um, for example, the word mankind or man-made is uh, gender biased and the neutral would be humanity or artificial. Um, so we used online resources from the Scientix repository and from OER Commons. Uh, it has a very large database um, with open resources. And we looked into um, resources for primary school level because from the literature we know that uh, stereotypes um, stereotype consciousness um, uh, evolves rapidly in children in between the ages of 6 to 10, so primary school. Um, and we looked into the science fields and the, in English resources because most of the resources that we found were in English, so we could um, gather a large sample. Um, so for the text, we looked at uh, biased words. We made a list of biased words and of neutral words, and we compared th those to the text of the resources. Um, and we used an algorithm to, uh, to automate this process. And for the visuals, so the images and the videos, we looked at uh, the number of men and women and boys and girls, and also um, the type of activity or profession that they, um, that they were doing in those pictures. Uh, to see if they were stereotyped or not. 
So for the text analysis, um, we found about 23,000 words that could be biased or neutral, and only 0.2% um, were biased, and those were, uh, that were 72 words, so that's not very much. And these were words uh, like man-made or uh, man, uh, used to describe all people. Um, and then 99.7% were gender-neutral words, um, chair, um, or forecaster was used. So this was a very positive result, uh, not very much bias there. Oh, sorry. Um, and then for the visuals, um, we found, uh, well, we looked at professions for men and women. Uh, they could be in a science profession or uh, they could be a teacher or another uh, non-science profession. And we looked at the activities uh, for men and women and boys and girls. Um, presenting, doing an experiment, hands-on activity, teaching or other were the types. And we found um, that for the men and women, 75% uh, of uh, the people depicted with the science profession were men, uh, and only 25% were women. And um, for the teacher, 63% uh, were depicted um, were women, and um, um, 27% uh, men, so that's very um, different. So they're both stereotypes. Um, and then when we look at all men depicted, we found that 55% of those were depicted with a science profession, so more than half, whereas for all women, only 38.5% uh, were depicted with a science profession. Um, but there were also a lot more uh, men in all the pictures than women in total. So we corrected for this difference and then we tested again to see if there's still more men um, depicted with a science profession. And we found that that was indeed the case. So uh, there were significantly more men depicted with a science profession than women. These are two examples from uh, NASA um, resources. And then uh, we also found still a significant uh, result for um, teaching. So there were more women uh, depicted as teachers uh, than men. And also the activity teaching, there were more women doing that than men. Um, and for boys and girls, we did not find any significant differences uh, in the activity. So that is also a positive result. Um, so uh, the language uh, that we tested was not um, gender biased very much. Um, so that's good. And then we found that gender stereotypes were presented in the visuals for these primary school students. Um, and this is the stage where children develop these stereotype views. So um, this is an important uh, point. Um, the boys and girls were balanced in activity, uh, but the adults were not. And it may be that the adults serve more as a role model in these uh, resources than boys and girls. So it's important that the uh, adults are represented in a balanced way as well. Um, so the recommendations uh, for um, not using gender stereotypes in uh, education resources um, are to balance the number of men and women. So there should be uh, an equal amount of men and women um, in, in science, uh, in the visuals and in the text. And also boys and girls should be uh, an equal number. And also the type of professions and activities that they do should be uh, equal. And for the language, it's best to use gender balanced language, so humanity or people. Um, and teaching methods that are balanced um, may help to increase girls' interest in science, and then maybe more girls will study science and work in the, in the science fields later. Um, and for teachers, they can uh, maybe explain more um, about science careers and use female scientists careers as, uh, as examples. Um, and also they can invite female scientists into the classroom to uh, serve as role models for, for the children. Um, so we uh, wrote an article about this which is published in PLOS ONE online. Um, and if you want to know more about Universe Awareness or the Astronomy and Society group, you can uh, use these links as well. Um, so, 
shall we ask for questions or yeah i guess i guess before before we open for discussion because yeah. for us and I, we know that there's a lot of teachers here a lot of people that spend time really trying to to engage with students will be very we are very curious to know more about your experiences if you feel that these stereotypes are re reality mm -hmm. and if, for us, I think uh, the most important thing is that we really need to, to give a very balanced view of what is science and technology and how we perform science and technology. This is not only a boys thing, uh, it's really something that is uh, important to have a participation of everyone, including boys and girls and women and, and men. And for us, it's very important that the teachers and especially people developing educational material really pay attention to these things and really follow some of the recommendations that we're trying to put out. So um, we'll be very open for questions. I already saw that there was one question about the, where we implemented this, uh, this research. And uh, this was not necessarily in a primary school setting, like it was not in the UK or another English-speaking country. What we did, we looked at the repositories of educational material, the scientific one, that I guess all of you know quite well. And, uh, and the, the, the other one is Open Education Resources Commons, a very big database of educational material. Most of these activities are really performed by, uh, those activities are being developed by teachers and educators and people that work in the field. So they, we really hope that we manage to reach them, to, for them to be more aware of this problem that we, we identified in the educational material. Thank you. Thank you both for the presentation. Um, let's leave a couple of minutes to see if ever anybody else has um, any question. Uh, let's wait. On the meantime, I don't know if there's any specific uh, aspect of your research that you want to develop. Oh, let's, we have one. So uh, maybe I will... Uh I'll try to, to answer those two questions and uh, so we use the database I think we could say that the OER comments in the in the uh, it's more a US the United States based activities yeah. and the scientists is more European and we most of the resources produced that they are on the scientists database are produced by these large networks of European projects that you some of them you know uh, including universe awareness so we cannot really um, distinguish if it was different from country to country because yeah. I think the only thing is that English is the language that we looked, the resources that we looked at were in English and we didn't do research to other languages but most of these resources are developed by members of different countries in Europe mainly. Uh, so I don't think there's a big difference between, and we didn't see any big difference between scientists and OER comments. Um, no. We also had a lot more uh, resources from OER Commons uh, than Scientix, which yeah. would be would be very fair to compare no. as well. But uh, all these activities are science and education activities because that's the the nature of the repositories, and all of them also include uh, arts activities, creativity. Yeah. So they they are not really just pure science and technology. It's really like educational activities as a whole. So there there was no big difference between STEM or STEAM. Uh, so we really didn't didn't see any difference there. Yes, and also we um, what would be interesting would be to compare different science fields. So to see if there is a science field with a lot more stereotypes uh, than another field. Um, so we haven't done that, but it could be uh, interesting future research. Okay, uh, there is another. Sorry, go on, go on. Yeah. No, there was this question about this, the, besides perhaps primary school teachers are less prepared in science. That's an interesting question and I guess of course the, the, a science teacher would be much more prepared than a primary school teacher to teach science. I think that's clear, mm -hmm. right? It's been the training. And, but I guess that's not actually the main problem that we identified. What we identified is that experts in developing educational material are not aware of these bias yeah. or at least they are very biased when developed. So it's not necessarily a problem in the teachers. It's a problem even at the level of people developing material. Yeah. Okay, there's another question um, from Irina and she asks if there's some materials that 
are more biased than other in some quest in some specific subjects? Um, yeah, we uh, we haven't looked into that. We haven't compared the different uh, science fields, um, so we don't know. But it would be interesting to to look into that. Um, but we just compared everything, uh, all the subjects together, to see how many um, um, gender stereotypes we could find. Maybe I guess the the only the only the only thing that we can say is, for example, that we didn't find a big big difference in terms of the text when people write down the activities. They were not necessarily they were not they were, we do, we couldn't find any bias there. But when people portrayed in visuals like images of a scientist, it would be main most of the times a, a man, and if you are talking about the teacher, it would be a woman, and that's a major uh, stereotype there that we identified. Yeah. There was also a question um, that we missed in the very beginning. Um, it was related to the fact that uh, if uh, wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to read it directly. Yes, it goes like, uh, it's Tanya Johnston, and she says, I have a question. In a field such as physics, for example, there are a high number of men in jobs. When presenting to young students this area of work, is there not a risk to present things in, in, an, in an unrealistic way? By that, I mean, if we show equal numbers of women and men in the image, this is not a realistic representation of the status. So if you want to address that comment? Um, yes, uh, that it would then be um, more realistic if you... For example, uh, depict more women uh, yes, as a teacher, but um, it would be better um, to show uh, just uh, as much men and women or boys and girls in science, for example, and as a teacher, um, because then maybe more girls will be interested in science because this stereotype will be um, will not exist anymore, and then they will study more science um, and work in those fields. So. We are more trying to um, to um, erase the, the the stereotypes, the gender stereotypes, um, and hope that there will be more girls in science and maybe more uh, boys um, who want to become a teacher. And and maybe just to add on that and to really try to to see that I think as a teacher and an educator that you work and you are in contact with uh, with students, I think you can be very honest about it and say that of course there's some fields including some physical science or engineering, there's very, very less women than men, and that's a reality. But we know that there's a reality that the fields are trying to change and find a much more balanced representation of both men and women. And I think the teacher needs to be aware of that and really sh show to the girls and, and uh, the female students that they can have a career in engineering if that's what, what they really want. And should not be the fact that there's ma less women in these fields that should stop them to do it. So I think the stereotype in terms of representation should not happen in educational material, but teachers and educators can be honest and, and be informed about those stereotypes that exist. Okay, there's another question from Lisa Marie Cahill, and she asks, did you consider any gender bias from informal learning areas like science centers? Could they help facilitate dispelling preconceptions of gender in science? Um, well, we did not look into the into those centers or what they um, what they use, what kind of um, resources or activities they have. Um, but uh, I suppose they could help um, to. Um, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. Those uh, informal learning centers um, they might help uh, to to interest more girls in science or for science. Um, so, so uh, and, and also in terms of the informal setting, so the interesting thing is that, especially for scientists and open educational resources, the educational material that we look at, most of them are also developed by science centers and other partners in the informal science education, like mm -hmm. science centers, museums. And there was, so I think that bias in terms of representation in, in the materials is there, but we didn't look into, for example, exhibition designs or certain activities or role model in science centers, but that could be a very interesting follow-up. But uh, once again, I think we, we really want to stress the fact that as educator and teacher, we need to be aware of these 
particular problem. And if you identified some stereotypes in your visits to science centers or museums, you should raise the fact and try to change it. Okay, we have a bunch of more questions from Irina. She asks, how about age groups? Are biases uniform over age? Because I have the feeling that for teenager girls, they are stronger or maybe just have a stronger effect. So yes, um, age groups. Um, so we looked at um, resources for um, children from uh, 6 to 10 or 11. Um, and we all we studied it all as one group. Um, but it is known that children in primary school, both boys and girls, um, are very interested in science or more interested at least than when they uh, go to high school. There is some, um, not sure why, but in high school uh, the girls um, start um, be less to be less interested in science. Um, so, but we haven't looked at the resources for that group, so we don't know how um, if there are any gender stereotypes in the resources for the secondary um, or high school um, students. And maybe just to add on that, I think I think what our study also shows and is quite interesting is that we found a major bias in terms of the professions when you are a, a grown-up, right? When you are an adult and you have a job and you are either a teacher or an engineer. And we, we didn't see that bias when the students are represented because boys and girls were represented in the same way in the activities, yeah. across the activities. Uh, what the students, there were no bias of more boys in science-related activities or girls. There was no bias there. I think it's really about when we show what kind of jobs they can have that we as science educators are presenting them as this is for boys, this is for girls. And I think that's absolutely something that we, we, we don't think is the right way of doing it. Okay, um, following the questions, there's two uh, that maybe I'll address them together. They're both from Lydia Nazzaro and Lydia Carrillo. One, it says how important it is for parents to decide for their children. The second one says we're focusing on education, what about media? Is this neutral way of communicating being shared with media? So um, it's just, uh, it's questions related to maybe other influences and like uh, how they can influence on stereotypes. Uh, I, I can comment a bit on that because we uh, informally, not for our research, we look into that. I think we, we all, and we have a lot of teachers here, and I think we all understand that the career decisions is not something that only happens in the classroom. Uh, th those happen in a, a much more complex social uh, setting, including the role of parents, family, friends, peers, and experiences, including very much the experience in the classroom. The parents play a big role in terms of career decision, no doubt. Our, uh, but in our, our case, we're really looking into the already an issue that it can be is identified, and we did that study. And I think we, as science educators, science teachers, we can contribute to change it. And uh, I think looking at the role of the parents and the bias that the parents have, and what can we do to make sure that the parents are well informed about careers for both boys and girls, that they are equal in every field, is something that should be done. But we didn't look into that. But definitely the parents play a big role on the career decisions. Okay. Um, it was one about the media, right? Yeah. Um, yes. The media, I think, is, is the same thing. Um, there was, there's no, there's not very few studies about this, and uh, uh, but you can also I think, as a without any proper evidence, I think we all also see that there's a much more bias on terms of the number of few, uh, male scientists that have a, a media profile higher than female scientists. I think we see that in in the countries where we live, and I think most of you will agree with that. I don't know any study on that. Uh, no, I don't no, but yeah. but I think we we all have the feeling that there's a on media, newspapers, TV. There's also a bias, but we didn't look into that. Um, regarding to, um, you've, you've mentioned if there are any studies about that. Actually, Maria Cantani is asking if you know from any, uh, any studies uh, or any findings related to how capacity, materials, or practices can counteract gender stereotypes in class, and can, how can they change according to students' age? So I'm assuming she's asking about how um, applying um, Materials that contract gender stereotypes. How? What's the what's the result in, in in students? If there's any studies available. Uh, 
maybe I, we know that there's some some particular projects and scientists and the UN they've been involved in some of these projects that are really tr trying to target girls and female students and trying to show them the career possibilities that we have in in science. And but the, in our study and in our recommendations, I, I think we go one or two steps uh, back and saying we should do that from the beginning when all these educational projects that they many times are funded by the European Union are developing educational material let's make sure that they are gender neutral and so we should start from every single material that we develop because all the other type of activities that we know like um, there's still several projects on girls education for science and technology are already trying to correct something that we did wrong in in the past so in my personal opinion, I think we should start from primary school education, make sure that the materials, textbooks and teachers are aware of this bias and don't try to propagate this bias later on. Uh, very well said. Um, there's a question from uh, David de, Pla de Pablo. He asks, do you think it's better to develop tasks only for girls to encourage them to study STEM careers or maybe is it better to work with kids groups, uh, boy, bo both boys and girls included? Um, well, uh, it would be good to um, work in groups as well, um, to not only focus on, on the girls. Um, and we, another point there is the really the, we, we see it a bit that there's specific projects uh, everywhere that trying to address only girls. Mm -hmm. And it seems they have some sense of, they have some impact. There's some studies that show if you do activities just with girls, they will, they will be in a setting that they will feel a bit more comfortable in sharing their, their, um, their questions, asking more questions. So there's some studies that show that having activities just for girls around science and technology have a big impact. But there's also other studies that having mixed groups and balanced groups and give the opportunity for boys and girls to interact and to have a, the same kind of participation is also very good. So I think as a teacher and educator, you need to figure out what will be the best model for you. But try both and see what works. Having activities just with girls and boys might be interesting, but mixing them might be also the solution. So I think in every single case, it's a different thing. Um, there's another question uh, from Lisa Marie Cahill. She says, uh, did you respond? So did you research any environmental behaviors that could inform how we should communicate with girls? Example, does poverty affect how girls decide what they are interested in? So I guess she asks about external factors that can also, apart from materials, that can also influence. Yeah, I think it's like um, what, uh, what was asked before about the media and uh, parents and friends that um, yeah, that can all influence their decision or their interest in, in science or in another subject. Um, but yeah, we only looked at the educational material. Um, and um, yeah, also in high school, we, we have read studies that in high school, the interest uh, of girls um, to science uh, changes, so they become less interested in science. Um, but we're not really sure why. Um, boys seem to uh, keep their interest in science in, in that um, age category. Yeah, there's there's a there's kind of a discussion going on in the chat <laughs> at the moment. Um, I will read it out loud to, in case anyone, no one is like really following it. But um, for all the participants, uh, Liliana, she says, uh, there are also studies that show that if women and men are separated in IT activities, women could be more interested to participate. My girl loved the activities of digitalmuse.org. And she adds, and the organization Digital Leadership Institute uh, is, is working only on women, for example. And then M, she says, I want to share some information on this question regarding the general environment. Uh, she says that, for example, after the series The X-Files, the percentages of girls wanting to become scientists raised dramatically by the influence of uh, Mrs. Scully on the series. Then Robert is sharing that the European Commissioner for Research said today in a speech that gender equal science is better science. And he wants to know if uh, other participants uh, agree on that. And uh, 
Liliana continues, uh, for example, the Lego, the Lego I buy for my boy is much more challenging than the one I, I buy for the girl, and it's quite scary to see that. Um, to, if you want to uh, comment, Pedro or Anne, anything on all these comments? <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess, I mean, uh, I think now that we start really trying to to look at the the around the different uh, different stereotypes, I think we can really see that stereotypes exist everywhere. I think what is really motivating for us is we see that a lot of people are aware, already aware of this and really trying to uh, mitigate the problems. And uh, so we uh, the, the 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 biased and the stereotypes are in every single aspect from educational material, from a cultural bias, from a, uh, toys from it, it's pretty much everywhere, and we as educators we need to be aware of them and trying to not let this propagate. Um, actually, I also want to raise uh, myself another question um, because I can see from your study that you've um, focused a lot on the materials used in the classroom, and um, I wanted to ask you or maybe uh, anyone else, any other participant, what do they think about? Um, not just the materials, but the role of the teacher in the classroom, because um, as far as I, I'm aware, it does also influence um, girls' behavior, girls' attainment, in, for instance, in science. So it's not just the materials, but the teacher, how uh, they address the students, how, how they make them participate, what roles do they make them um, do in the classroom. So I don't know if you wanted to um, share any insight on that. Um, yeah, I think it's very important. Uh, the teacher role is very important in the classroom. Um, it could be that when when teacher is discussing a science topic that they would um, mainly ask questions uh, to the boys because they think they will know the answer or be more interested. So um, the teacher should uh, should try to to ask both girls and boys the same kind of questions and to um, involve them both in in the topic. Um, and um, yeah. I think that the teachers play the major role here, especially because the teachers is some, something that we science scientists work in universities, science educators, developers of educational material uh, can really kind of reach through, through networks like the one on scientists. And I think we, we can really be open, honest and saying that there's a problem, let's try to fix it from educational material and from your own, uh, the, the way that you teach and the way that you show different career of, of possibilities. And uh, so uh, definitely the teachers are, are central to solve the problem that we have in academia, in research, in science and technology jobs. Yeah, uh, there's, there's still a discussion going on in the chat I'm trying to follow up uh, as well. Uh, let's, let's say it out loud as when uh, Maria Cantani, she says, what I love though is that more and more artists and writers create science theme adventures starring either historic women, figures that had a strong effect on their fields of girl heroes rocking in science. Uh, so teachers, we really have a great fun material to use in class at the moment. So I guess Maria wants to highlight that there's more like uh, female role models at the moment that they can use as materials in the classroom. Definitely, and I think that's that's a, a very positive trend that we see in, in in different aspects of cultural, in the movies, in cartoons, in science as well. We see that the people are more aware and really trying to sh to show different the different role models that we have in science. So I think we, there's a, there's some very positive trends. Hopefully, they're going to really support and change this this need that we have. Yes, uh, there's also uh, this uh, discussion now in the chat about uh, this 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 Lego that are uh, Lego that are addressed to girls and and boys um, and how they try to make toys gendered, um, which I guess they shouldn't, as you mentioned, um, it should be uh, gender balanced or gender neutral. So why gendered the Legos? Um, while we wait for other questions, um, just mention for everyone, um, if they're interested now that Pedro mentioned uh, Scientix and the efforts that Scientix are doing in terms of gender equality, uh, we have still going on the MOOC, Opening Minds to STEM Careers. And if you have a whole module on gender equality, if you want to check it, um, we also uh, talk a little bit about methodologies that you can use in the classroom to improve gender equality.
Let's see if there's any other question on the chat. We'll wait uh, for a couple, couple or three more minutes. So if anyone is interested, please write your questions and otherwise we'll, we'll be able to be closing down. Okay, but, uh, there is one more question from Liliana. She says, uh, could your results change according to the salary of the families? So I guess they want to know about any, like about socioeconomic um, variables. We didn't, we didn't look into that. I think we really just look at the educational materials that the teachers can use or are using in, in their classrooms or in the science centers. So we didn't really look at the demographics, social background of the, the students or the teachers or, or the schools where these resources are available. Our um, looking at the big numbers that we know that we have in, in science, I'll tr Trend, I'll tend to say no, I don't think there's a big difference between the, the, the social background as soon as the students decide which careers they go. I mean, we know that there's a huge difference in terms of the social background of families of students following or not a career in a, at university level and then become a scientist or an engineer. Um, there are several studies that show that in, in, in Europe, but I don't think that the bias is different. I don't think that... Uh, poorer families would be easier for a girl to follow a science or technology career or vice versa. I think the problem is transversal at all different social backgrounds. Okay, um, there, there has been indeed a lot of questions about uh, other factors other than the resources or the materials used in the classroom, but I understand it's, everything is uh, linked, so um, it's nice to have the perspective of someone on the, on the field. Um, uh, but I need... Uh, Sorry, uh, go ahead. Uh, there's a lot of different different studies that I think we need to have, and I think the problem is it's very transversal. And uh, we just really identify this one as a potential one that we could change easily, and including our own project that we do here from Leiden, Scientix, and other other big European projects. Uh, that's why I think that we're trying to look at these resources. Yes, uh, there's another question from Veronique de Vrune. She says. Uh, the women in science that I know found their weight and do not know, do not understand why others would need a role model. So, how do we find role models? I think there are also many um, women who are scientists who um, who would like to be a role model. I think um, on the Space Awareness website there are um, it's a website for teenagers about space careers, uh, and they have. Um, multiple women there who, who have a career in astronomy or maybe physics as well um, who, who are actually role models. If you go to the, to the website you can see some uh, videos. Um. And, and I, guess, I guess an important point is that when for example um, uh, there's, there's you invite a teacher to come uh, to give a talk, or sorry, to invite a scientist or engineer to come and give a talk at your primary school and to your local university or national university, you can immediately say it would be great if you could be a female scientist or a female engineer. So you as a teacher you can really uh, try to, to, to request them. And I think we say that we know that there's other projects like the STEM Alliance that is, they have role models and um, and, and I think you can find those those role models um, in in your community that can really come and show to the girls, show to the, even to the boys as well when it's necessary that there's is the diversity that we need in science and technology. Yes, I also uh, since Pedro mentioned the STEM alliance, if you go to the website on the professional goals back. Professionals goes back to school scheme. We also show um, women, women role models. Also mentioned last week, we had some webinars from the STEM Alliance. You have, you can, you can find the link on on the chat. We have a couple of webinars about uh, Amgen Teach Scholars, which were two girls who are currently um, cursing their PhDs on science fields. Uh, you can have them also on the STEM Alliance, and they share their insight on their own personal story, and and they're great as role models. So. 
uh, you got this, those resources there. Here I can also see mentioned the International Girls in ICT Day, which also provides with a female role. I'm, I'm waiting a little bit because I see a lot of uh, people writing on the typing on the chat. So let's see if there's any other questions or positive feedback, which there's a lot. That's also good to know. Okay, so uh, I think uh, I think the questions. Uh, I think uh, everybody got their question answered. Um, so just to remind everyone that uh, if you want to get the certificate for uh, attending this webinar, you need to fill in our our survey. Uh, Noel just posted the link on the chat. And once again, thank you all for participating in the Scientix webinars, and thank you Anne and Pedro for providing for a very interesting one. And uh, yes, to everyone, uh, we'll see you next one, next time. Uh, thank you, everyone. See you next time. Thank yes, you. Thank you.